one of my family's favorite dishes, but I'm gonna put an Asian spin on it today because I'm trying to keep it with an Asian theme. I'm gonna use uh, Katara and make egg noodles. This dish is Trinidadian and Canadian meat. So I've got the black cod and I've got some pigeon peas. I love fish and I love it with fresh mango and cucumber chutney. He's just about to start working on his noodles. He is, to me, almost the pasta master. He loves working with noodles, and the fact that he's using a guitar, which is a special little device, an Italian device to make those noodles, shows that he's very confident and comfortable that he can make a really great noodle. I think I'm being the right amount of ambitious doing these techniques for my entree because it's all calculated, and I know I can execute it. There's the scotch bonnet. It's got bonnet, okay? It's delicious, it's spicy, and it's got flavor, just like me. Oh, that smells good, Marita. You smell it up there? Yeah, girl. Marita, what are you working on? I'm working on my cucumber chutney. They're all telling you it smells good. Yes, chef. It sure does. It sure does, absolutely. I can smell the heat in that, too. No more. It's got a good solid base. Looking great, Marita. Have you worked with black cod before? The good thing about the black cod, it is kind of forgiving. It's going to be. I'm not so nice sure fish. about that myself, because it is a white fish that is very flaky and become overcooked very quickly. And when it's overcooked, it is dry, and nobody wants to eat a dry no. piece of fish. Keep it nice and moist. Thank you. I have to make sure I cook that cod perfectly, or else I'm done like dinner. You have 30 minutes remaining. You're now at the halfway mark. The cooking of the lobster has to be perfect. Lobster is a family favorite, and I definitely can't let them down because I feel like I disappointed them in the lobster challenge before. How you doing, Eric? What do you have in here? A lot of herbs, uh, spices, uh, coriander, and grass. Your lobsters are chilling? How are they cooked? Are they medium rare right now? They're slightly under. Oh, look at that. How long did you cook these lobsters for? Uh, eight minutes, chef. Eight minutes? Yeah. Chef Claudio thinks I overcooked my lobster. I just have to push through and execute this lobster dish. I can't go home unless I'm Canada's first master chef. Yeah! Can I have some? <laughs> Looking good, Marina! I love that she's making the black cod in the taro leaf, too. So Marita's wrapping her fish and getting it ready to steam. She thinks it's a pretty forgiving fish. So that, to me, is a bit of a concern right now. You have 10 minutes left! 10 minutes! Oh, Eric already cooked his lobster almost to the edge. Now, if he stir fries that lobster on top of the poaching, I'm concerned it might be overcooked. Marita is definitely playing it safe, doing what she knows really well, which might be a very smart move, but only time will tell. One! I'm happy to get a real walk and just cook some Asian food. I'm back in my element, stir-frying these noodles. 30 seconds! Woo! Come on, Marita! Yeah. Yes! Beautiful! 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1! I hope they brought their passports because we're going to Trinidad with this meal. The lobster has to be perfect because I overcooked it last time. If I overcook it again, then what kind of redemption is that? Eric, please bring up your entree. It's uh, homemade egg noodles with uh, lobster sauce, aromatic spices, and then lime segments. Eric, you've learned how to cook lobster to a tea. The noodles are amazing. The sauce, not too creamy and over the top rich, but is subtle with flavor. It's a fine dish that I'd serve in a fine restaurant. Certainly one of mine. Thank you. It's impressive. Eric, 
by using the guitar, you have the perfect, what we call the Shanghainese noodles. You know, you got that nice, smoky, burnt flavor. Here is when you're mixing East and the West together, and you do it right. Very, very smart. Thank you, Chef. If you look back at the cook that you were when you first entered this competition, and you compare that person, that skill level, to where you are now, it's night and day. Thank you so much, Chef. Whatever the outcome is today, you need to cook. I am really nervous. He's getting a lot of positive feedback. Marita, please bring up your entree. I have black cod steamed in a terra leaf with pigeon pea puree, a fresh mango chutney on top, and fresh cucumber sauce on the side. Maria, the pigeon pea puree, very nice. The tomato, sweet, concentrated, very strong flavor. The mango, bit of sugar you added to remove a little bit of the acidity. You have elevated this very simple dish from Trinidad. You've created a dish, in my opinion, that is a destination dish. A dish that people would travel for, which is a huge accomplishment. Thank you, chef. This piece of black cod. See how moist that is? How it glistens? That is exactly how to cook one of the most beautiful, delicate white fish that we serve in restaurants today. Thank you, chef. My big disappointment on the plate is the amount of fish. It doesn't resemble a full main course portion. Serving one piece of fish is disappointing. Everything else about the dish, spot on. Thank you, Chef. He's taking a technique which takes hours and hours to prepare properly. How is he going to pull that off? Also, yeah. he's taking gooey duck, which is tougher than normal clams. When they're overcooked, they're like rubber bands. There is no margin for error. Lynn's also chosen a game meat. Elk is very lean. Cooking has to be done very subtly. That will take about 12 to 15 minutes to cook and five to six minutes to rest. Wow, well, Mom, you look good. That's amazing. Wow, Lynn, what are you going to be doing with these uh, spun potatoes? I'll be making trees. How do you plan to do that? I'm going to wrap it around a wine glass to get the shade, and then I will deep fry it. Wow, that's a unique approach. Look at this beautiful elk here. Have you cooked with elk before? I've never cooked with elk. You never have? Nope. Sometimes you have to take risks, because if you don't, you'll never get ahead, Chef. Well, I admire that ambition. Thank Best you. Best of luck with it. Yeah. You got this, David. Here we go, brother. David, are you concerned that you picked raising meat for such a time-sensitive challenge? This is oil. Yes. And I can leave my finger in here. Yeah, just nice and slow. Nice and slow for a challenge like this? I believe that the rounds are small enough that they'll cook through. I want to get that to a medium, and then I'm going to throw it in the fryer. And what about the gooey duck? It's also a very challenging protein to work with. It is, truly. I have worked with gooey duck a lot. It's just simply not overcooking it. You're taking a lot of risks here. I am. And if you pull this off, I'm going to be very impressed. Well, best of luck. Thank you, Chef. You got it, babe. 30 minutes! You have 30 minutes left! My trees isn't working. I'm worried about my potato trees. I need to leave enough time to cook my elk, and I'm pressed for time right now. She is so concerned with her trees, she's not paying any attention to her elk. If she doesn't get the elk on in the next five minutes, it is over for her. Come on, Mom. I can tell you right now, Tammy looks worried for her. I think Lynn's unraveling. What the hell did I get myself into? Like, what was I thinking? The star of this plate is going to be the well bore. Porky goodness. Here we go, David. You got this, man. David, fire it up! Ooh, yeah, David. Looking good, man. Woo! Yeah, baby. Five minutes, and this time, you should be plating. Flip it up. 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 Flip it
Look what's happening over here, gentlemen. I'm working at Super Ninja Speed to get everything on the plate. She is building those plates. Unbelievable. That's the way I like it. One minute. You have one minute left. Come on, one minute. This plate is so important. This is everything. It's quirky, it's artistic, like me. As I look at my dish, I'm happy with it. It looks like a restaurant quality dish. David, please bring up your entree. This entree is very personal to me. I just hope I'm making my mom proud. My dish is a wild boar belly with gooey duck clam and brown butter carrot puree. It's an exquisite looking dish. David, you're taking the inspiration from clam and pork. I mean, that's just right up my alley. You know, Asians, we love to mix seafood with meat. Do eat that clam with this wild boar, perfect compliment. And the combinations of textures of everything, it just goes together. The clam is so tender. It is the thing of beauty. Very sophisticated, humble dish from a very sophisticated, humble chef. Your wow factor on this plate is the wild boar belly. Herbs and a little citrus seasoned beautifully. Absolutely delicious. We chefs love to be surprised. And you surprised us with this dish. Nicely done. Thank you. Lynn, please bring your dish up. I hope the judges don't think it's too extravagant or show-offy and that they get my story and my creativity. My dish is a butter-basted elk tenderloin in a potato forest, a bed of a celery root puree. Lynn, your dish. It has a real flamboyance to it, and you've definitely connected with the ingredients. I think you made one error. You spent most of your time with your potato, which I don't think should be the star of the show here. It's the elk. The elk is just a little rare. That's the only fault on the whole dish. Everything else is seasoned properly. The puree is lovely. Just the elk. I mean, the elk. Seasoned beautifully. Caramelized all the way around. Absolutely beautiful, but it's just a hair on the underdone side. The celeriac puree has that slightly sweet, earthy flavor, a beautiful accompaniment. This is the kind of enchanted forest I could visit. Then I love stories on the plate, and that story enchanted me the potatoes and the way it's shredded and the perfect season. You can just eat this all day. All the ingredients, they go together. Enchantment magics happen. Jeremy is taking four sushi-inspired dishes. He's got a lot of things to pull together there. Now, Jeremy's sushi boat has to be elevated. It can't be sushi that you get in a kiosk at a shopping mall. This has to be sushi that we've never seen before anywhere. I'm making sushi because sushi got me my apron, so I'm thinking sushi's gonna get me the title. Hey there, Jeremy. Hey, Chef. So tell me, what you're doing right now with the papaya? This is the traditional way to make papaya salad. So you cut into it down to close to where the seeds are at, and then you take a slicer and you do this. That's the way that it's traditionally made in uh, Southeast Asia. That's amazing. And then wow. you get all these little Whiskey uneven strands. cuts. Yeah. How are you planning to tie all of these four dishes together so they make the feeling of a one complete entree dish? They all have soy, ginger, and wasabi. They all play on those elements. Sounds like you've got a lot to get done. I'll leave you to it. Thank Thanks you, so much, Jeremy. Yeah. Me 
Mary has been so good with meat, I sometimes forget she's a vegetarian. When I'm cooking meat, I need to go by eye and smell and feel. This pressure is insane. When it comes to sushi rice in Japan, it is sacred. It is served at room temperature. I make my sushi rice, and it has to get cooled, so I put it in the blast driller. He didn't have to put it in the blast driller. He had plenty of time, put a cloth over it and let it cool. Sometimes you put it in the blast driller, the rice gets dry and hard. As I'm shucking the oysters, I am so full of adrenaline right now that holding the oyster knife is nearly impossible. Mary is struggling with those oysters big time. In the pandemonium, I realized that I didn't take my beef out of the oven. That meat has continued to cook. Mary's looking frazzled at those steaks. I don't think she's happy. I'm really nervous that I've accidentally overcooked my meat. I am panicking. That doesn't look like medium rare to me. You don't know it until we cut into it. It's going to be the moment of truth. Ten minutes, you have ten minutes left. The rice, Jeremy. I leave my rice in the blast chiller too long. The rice froze a little. Now I gotta figure out how I'm gonna save this rice. His rice is frozen into His one rice. solid sheet. And now he's trying to defrost it in the oven. The sushi rice is no good, then your dish is no good. I have so many things on the go. Have you ever seen Mary's station in such a state of disarray? Look at it. I need to put the best thing I can on that plate. Time is not at all my friend in this cook. Jeremy is going to put the new spin on four sushi-inspired dishes. Jeremy is really running around. Look at the sweat coming from his face. He's got the speed, but where he sometimes lets himself down is the finesse and running out of time in terms of plating. One minute left, last minute. Get those finishing touches on your plate now. Good job. I feel good. I didn't think I was going to get everything on the plate, but I pulled it off. I'm really worried that my meat is over. I really don't want it above medium. Jeremy, please bring up your dish. I made four different dishes. There is a deconstructed soft shell crab spider roll, and then a miso marinated baby octopus with mushrooms, a tuna crunch roll with wasabi mayo and crispy salmon skin, and then a ginger papaya salad. Well, you know, Jeremy, I was a little bit worried about the rice because you had it in the blast chiller and you had it in the oven. But you know something? The rice, to me, was perfect. I eat in sushi in some of the best restaurants in Asia. This is restaurant quality. Just absolutely creative and delicious. Thank you, Chef. Jeremy, this is a feast for one's eyes. And I know that you have been challenged at times with plating. You'd never know that, looking at these four dishes. The tuna roll, very clean, very well executed. The soft shell crab, cooked beautiful and crisp. The dish that for me fell a little flat was the papaya salad. I'm looking for a little sweetness in it to make it sing for me. Otherwise, a really great job. You should be very proud of yourself. Thank you, Chef. So, Jeremy, here you have four very different things happening on one plate, opposed to having one composed main course that's very focused. You give yourself now four different ways to be criticized. You know that. Mm -hmm. The standout dish for me was the octopus with the mushrooms. You could have just served one dish, and it could have been that dish right there. That's my advice to you is focus. You need to focus more. But overall, very ambitious and very delicious. Thank you, Chef. Mary, please bring yours up. So this is my take on Surf and Turf. It's a seared beef tenderloin with fried oysters and an arugula and sea asparagus pesto. 
It's a beautifully composed play on every level, but I know right now you're absolutely agonizing, wondering what is happening inside this piece of meat here. I am just cringing, waiting to see the center. Perfect medium. All right, let's dig in. Mary, the ingredients that you chose to put on this dish, I think were well thought out, they work together, and it's a fun play on surf and turf. The oyster, briny, salty, added that wonderful savory pop. A lovely, thoughtful, excellently executed dish. Thank you. Mary, each individual component was perfect. The leek onion ring, I mean, that is genius. The uh, pesto, sea asparagus, something very unique and something I would be proud to serve in my restaurant. Thanks very much. You know, Mary, I think you found your niche. Taking the old school and bringing it to the new school. It's such a beautifully composed plate in terms of the combination of flavors, presentation, the sea asparagus with the arugula and a pesto. That's the first time I've ever had those two together and they work brilliantly. It's pretty outstanding. It really is. Thank you. Pineapple, where's my pineapple? For the main, I'm doing a braised pork cheek tamale ball with crispy pork belly and pineapple mole. I'm no longer the girl that got the second chance and just barely made it in. I'm now the best of the best. You can't question that. I'm in the finale. <laughs> You know, mole sauce is one of the mother sauces in Mexican cuisine. It is very difficult to get right. It's about really balancing spices, heat, not an easy task. Ooh, it's spicy. Got a little steam coming from your ears, dear. It's important for me to nail this lamb for my mama up there watching down. She's the one that introduced me to lamb, and I just want to make her proud today. <laughs> I want to win so bad, my food dream is to open a restaurant. I'm not sure what kind of restaurant. I can tell you it's going to be called Valerie's, though, named after my mama. No boy, crab. Stay focused. Hey, he's pulling her pork bellies out. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Hi. Taya, so you got your pork belly in, I noticed, in the first round. Yes. That was a smart move. Look at the juice coming out of that. Yeah, I'm really, really happy with it, Chef. So what are these balls that you're making? This is the pulled pork cheek with um, the mole sauce. and stuffing the tamale and frying it. This is the most elevated cooking I have seen you do in this competition. I'm trying hard to impress you guys. Why did you wait? You know, I think it took me a while to get my confidence in the kitchen. And now that I'm able to cook what I want to cook, I want to show you guys that I mean business. I'm already impressed. Thank you, Keep Chef. Keep it up. Thank you, Chef. This win would be golden ticket to my food dream. I want to be a food critic. I mean, I got a good palate. I might as well use it, right? 20 minutes. You have 20 minutes left. Just going to get that puree going. The tables have completely turned. Taya is cool, calm, and ready. And Trevor is trying to play catch up. I'm way behind. I'm rushing to get this finished. Look, 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 it's caught fire. I look over and my entire pressure cooker is in flame. I put too much port wine in my lamb al sabuco. Whenever you add alcohol into a pot, always make sure that pot starts cold. It's a very hot pot. It can ignite right away and can take away a lot of hair, like Michael. I mean, <laughs> I had to restart it up. I lost a good 10, 15 minutes of pressure cooking time. You got it, you got it, Trevor. I hope my lamb shanks are tender. 10 minutes, you have 10 minutes left. What the heck's happening? I'm deep frying my tamale balls, and when I turn and look, the deep fryer is not to temperature. Shit, stupid fryer. The fryer is still the quickest way to cook this. No going back, I have to stick with the plan. Okay, I'll see you in a minute. I looked down at my lamb, and I couldn't be happier. It's exactly how I envisioned. 
Beautiful. Get it going, buddy. All right. He's running out of time. <sighs> My lamb reduction, I got to get reduced before it goes on the plate. It's too fatty. It's too whiny. I'm cutting it really close. And this is a sauce that needs usually hours of reduction. He's going to try and do it in minutes. He is really pushing it now. Keep an eye on that for me. Pull it together. I got to get back on track. I got to be able to plate. My plating is everything. In five minutes, the server will be coming for the entree. Hot touch. I'm getting frazzled because I don't have that much time to plate. Look at the focus right now. This is next level. You got this, Trevor. One minute! One more minute left! Tia, you can do it! My God, what? Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and a go! Unreal. We get to taste, and they have to keep cooking. So let's go, guys. The first entree the judges will taste is Trevor's braised lamb shank and lamb tongue with celery act puree and vegetables. Judging from looks alone, this is a piece of art. It has this progression of from color to meat. I just love this. He's plating like a true professional chef. Always has, and I think that's one of his strengths. The flavors of the lamb shank, I think, are wonderful. Great depth of flavor. It is cooked beautifully. I would have loved a little bit more of that braising liquor as a sauce reduced and poured over it. His celery root puree, creamy, delicate, well-seasoned, really nice. The shank, nice and tasty. My tongue was nice, soft, and tender. I love these little beetroots. That's an extra touch of earthiness to the dish. I love this dish. The vegetables, I think, are world class. Perfectly cooked, perfectly cleaned. It's really smart. There's not one ingredient out of place. Absolute perfection. Next up is Taya's entree. Braised pork belly and pork cheek tamale ball and a pineapple mole. It doesn't look as good as the appetizer. The color of the tamale ball is a bit light. It doesn't have that golden look that you would expect from a deep fried item. I do think it's a playful take. I love the colors on the plate. It does say Mexico to me. And now it's all down to how it's going to taste. Wow. Boy, Taya can cook. I mean, the flavors here. The pork belly, I think, is pork delicious. Other than I think it could have been pan fried a touch to be a little bit more crispy. The mole, beautiful combination. The spice is just right. And she's very, very good with heat. But tamari ball, it's hard, it's doughy, and the pulled pork inside, it's dry. This tamale is actually raw. Completely raw in the middle. Great idea, but you know, the execution was not there. Taya is clearly masterful when it comes to spices and seasoning. She has nailed the flavors of Mexico. That, to me, makes this dish a real knockout. The main course is a Nova Scotian hodgepodge. It's basically a pot with a bunch of cream in it and every fresh vegetable that's pulled from the garden that day. And I'm going to elevate that with sweetbreads and Dungeness crab. These things are amazing. And then finish it with a crab bisque on top. Andy's menu is ambitious, but I know Andy can pull it off. Gotta push, gotta push. I feel like things are going really well right now. I just need to keep pushing. Every element has to be perfect because there's not a lot of room to hide. For the entree, I'm making rabbit two ways with Jerusalem artichoke puree. I have to braise the rabbit, which I already started. Oh my goodness, what is that called again? Call fat. Call fat. You're putting your rabbit and your apple in there, yeah? Yeah. Wow. It's amazing. Call's fat is the fat around a cow's stomach. It's just a great way of keeping things together with 
meat. And also add moisture and flavors. At home, don't have the equipment, don't have the access to all these ingredients. Like three months ago, it was impossible to become a chef for me. And now it's super close. Yes, yes, Becky, yes, Becky. 30 minutes! You have 30 minutes left. Okay, Boo Bear, let's go. Oh, Andy, that looks delish. A soubise is simply an onion sauce. You take lots of onions and slowly cook them without any color. Oh, God, it's gonna be so good. This dish is much more reserved and focused on classical French techniques. Looks good, Andy. Looks good, bud. I want to win because I really want to build a name for myself on the food scene in Halifax. Looks great, bud. Looks good. Andy! Jeff! Tell me exactly what you're doing. I'm doing a uh, Nova Scotia hodgepodge. You're putting crab in it, and I'm gonna have some crispy sweetbreads for texture, and just like a play on surf and turf, really. What is the most difficult element for you in this dish? A lot of the food from the East Coast is pretty basic in nature, so I'm trying to, trying to elevate. Good luck with it. Thank you. I really hope that they like it. Becky seems like she's calmed down now. Nice dabbing. Great Good dabbing. dabbing. Good dabbing, Becky. <laughs> There's a lot of pitfalls when you're cooking rabbit. The meat is very lean, not a lot of fat to it, easy to overcook. But if you do it right, I can tell you, a rabbit could be absolutely delicious. Those look beautiful, Bex. Thanks. 20 minutes! In 20 minutes, the servers will be coming for your entrees. There are elements in my main that take some time. And I'm all over the place. Someone just keep an eye on this to make sure it doesn't go over. We got eyes on the cream for you, bud. We got it for you, Andy. This is incredibly intense, and I'm feeling that right now. Andy needs to conserve his energy because he still has another course. Come on, Andy. 18 yeah, minutes. I'm, good. I'm there. I'm there. If Andy lets the stress get to him and makes a mistake, there's no turning back. It might look that I'm completely out of control, but I've learned in this competition that greatness happens on the edge of chaos. Yeah, get the sous vide ready to go, so we're in good shape here. We're in very good shape. 10 minutes! Service in 10 minutes! Looks like a hundred grand hodgepodge. <laughs> <laughs> we're seeing a lot of intensity from Andy right now. Part of the crab this, the way that I'm making it, is roasting the shells in the oven, putting it into a stock pot. I'll incorporate some cream, reduce it down further so it's really thick and dense, and hopefully have that really pungent crab flavor. Two minutes! Servers are coming in two minutes! Go, Andy, you're doing good, buddy. Plating is absolutely key. Everything I put out has to be restaurant quality. Incredible focus on these two home cooks. There's a lot of pressure right now. I can feel my hands shaking as I put the puree in the plate. Yes, Becky. These last seconds are completely chaotic. Let's go, Andy. Come on, Andy. Yeah, let's do it. I'm trying to get the microgreens on there just to give it a refining touch. Come on, Andy. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. I'm really happy with the apple flavors in the entree. They're infused into the rabbit, so you can't really miss them. The first entree the judges will taste is Becky's. Rabbit saddle, caramelized apple and fennel wrapped in colfan, and cider braised rabbit legs on a Jerusalem artichoke puree. The sauce could have been a little bit, bit thicker. It lacks a bit of color, but it smells great. Her composition is actually very chef-inspired. The cook on Becky's loin of rabbit is spot on perfect. And then the leg, moist, but fall off the bone flaky. This is a dish that embodies her thoughtfulness she's put into the dish. It's things that grow together, go together. The archi puree is smooth, silky. It, it's not rich, but it's got flavor. Mm -hmm. She cooks with so much instinct. She nailed it. Next up, is Andy's entree, a Dungeness crab and sweetbread hodgepodge on an onion soubise topped with a crab bisque. It's colorful, but you know, it doesn't look like 
a main course. Is it a soup? There's nothing to bind this dish together. You know what I have on my plate? Dirt. That's from the hydroponics. It does look tasty, though, and that could save everything. Oh, look at the shine on the sweetbreads. I think Andy did a wonderful job at bringing the ocean and the land together. I mean, the crab is perfectly cooked. The sweetbreads are succulent. His subis onion sauce at the bottom, the creaminess is outstanding. The crab bisque is really full of deep, rich flavor. We come to expect both flavors from Andy, and this dish delivers. These ones are a little too big. Everything got to look good. Keep going, keep going. Two different approaches. Jennifer is going very conceptual, and Andre is going rustic Caribbean. But the flavors that he knows and loves. I'm making a curry goat wasam. My wife is inspiring this dish, because <laughs> she always takes me out to a million Asian restaurants. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm bringing a Jamaican curry goat dish into a Korean dish. Nice knife skills. <laughs> <laughs> My osan platter will be made up of goat. Two ways I'm braising goat loin and I'm currying goat. Also caramelized kimchi, the dark hot, a green mango salad, and a green onion ginger sauce. Well, that's good. Korean Caribbean. I like that. If you can get it right, you're going to get beautiful combinations of flavor and spices. Doing great, Andre. <laughs> Uh, right now, I'm working on some lamb shanks. I just seared them to brown them, and now I'm going to get them going in the pressure cooker. She's pressure cooking her lamb for only 35 minutes. She has to get that lamb shank in the pressure cooker right now, otherwise it won't be cooked. Yeah, that's time to slow down. Slow down. There you go. Yes. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> that a girl. Getting something into the pressure cooker is a calculated risk. You don't know exactly what's going on until you open it. Timing on the lamb is like mega important. 30 minutes. 30 minutes for your entree. What is that, Andre? Gochujang. It's like a spicy red pepper paste. Is that for the salad, too? That's for the mango salad. Oh, nice. Is it good? Could use something to mellow it up. More honey? Yeah, and some lime. I just got to make sure I don't overthink everything and just do what I do best, flavors. Get uh, some salt in there. Jennifer is taking that childhood nursery rhyme and creating almost every element from that nursery rhyme in this dish. I am making a mint fleece for the lamb. To do this, I'm powdering some mint candies, and I'm going to make them into the cotton candy. That is going to be the minty element, which is a great condiment to have with lamb. Is she doing cotton candy in her dessert? No, or no, this is in this entree? dish. What? It's crazy. I want a nice little fleecy ball that almost looks like a cloud and will melt away when it touches the lamb. There we go. He still has to do the other goat. This is goat loin. I'm serving this goat two ways. For the curried goat in the pressure cooker, almost there. It's going to have a pulled pork consistency. For the braised goat, it's going to be nice and tender like a filet mignon. I'm going to braise it, baste it in butter, and get it nice. I'm looking for a medium rare cook on my goat loin. If I don't get the cook on this goat right, I'm just handing the trophy directly to Jennifer. 20 minutes, only 20 minutes left. OK, OK. Oh my god, Jennifer. Both Andre and Jennifer right now are feeling the pressure. I think part of it is that they're multitasking. Half of my burners are taken up by the pressure cookers for almost the entirety of this cook. I have at least five elements that require burners. This is very tricky. I think she has too many things to do. I'm a little bit anxious about that. Less than 20 minutes left. The only thing I have done is fleece. I can think of eight other things. I still have to finish. Can I get this all done? I know how to do all these things, but time is of the essence. My oats, I am hay smoking right now. I just got to do the next right thing. I feel like a lamb might want to eat some oats. <laughs> She's got to be very careful with the smoking. Do not over smoke. It might impart a bitter finish to those oats. It's risky, but if it works, pure genius. Steel cut oats are amazing anyway, but with like the sneak attack of smoked taste, I think it'll be outrageously awesome. The smoke smells awesome. Thank you, thank you. Goat, how's the goat? Andre is opening up his pressure cooker. How is it? 
tastes good. I need some salt. And look, Jennifer's opening up her pressure cooker now. I don't know if it looks done to me. It's tough to see from up here, right? I can tell whether or not things are done, usually by feel. I hope I nailed it. How's my time, guys? Five minutes, five, five minutes. minutes. Keep going, keep going. What was that, Jennifer? A uh, red wine demi-glace. Wow. I'm gonna add some of that uh, sour cherry syrup to it. I am brushing these lamb bones with some of the glaze and wrapping them in copper foil. It's finale day, why wouldn't I? Two minutes, you only have two more minutes left. I'm pretty close, I'm pretty close. It's looking good, bro, looking good. Watch your time. Go, Andre, go. How you doing, man? I think I'm doing well. What are you gonna do with the cabbage? The cabbage is what they're gonna eat it out of, so they're gonna wrap it and put it in the cabbage. Okay. One minute, you have one more minute to entree time. Look at those dishes. Wow. Oh, that looks so delicious. Thanks, guys. Nice, Jennifer. Oh, my God. Let up now because dessert is going to be served in one hour. The judges will now head to the banquet room to taste the entrees. Okay, Bolsam has probably never been seen like this before. I think the judges will really like it. At the start of this, I thought this dish might be a bit impossible because there was just so many elements, but it did all come together. I just really hope they love it. Jennifer's entree is up first. It's a braised lamb shank served with hay smoked oats, sour cherry glaze, and a mint fleece. I always love a story in a dish. It evokes the sort of whimsy of that nursery rhyme. It is eye-catchingly colorful. And this right here, this mint fleece, it is so unusual, very smart. Oh boy. This lamb is undercooked, it's slightly rare. In the middle, my lamb is slightly undercooked. It's a braising piece of meat. This is not the type of meat that you ever, ever serve, medium rare or rare. Claudio, that's too bad because my piece of lamb is beautifully cooked, tender and juicy. Mine was also cooked perfectly. I think we have to consider that both of you had smaller shanks than mine. But the vegetables, for me, are really the star of the show. They're so complex. The carrots perfectly cooked. The oats with that smoke going through them, sensational. I love that combination of meat, fruits, vegetables, starch, all coming together. And the thing is, everything fits. And then you got that plump cherry giving acidity, bit of that juice balancing with sweetness. And finally, I love that mint fleece. There is such a lot of detail in this dish. It's a really good one. Next up is Andre's entree, a curried goat bosam with pulled curried goat, sliced goat loin, caramelized kimchi, and a mango salad in gochujang sauce. First thing in my mind is I really got to dig into this dish. Once you smell that aroma of the curry, of all the spices coming from Korea and the Caribbean, and making it a bosam, okay, something wrapped in lettuce, which is going to take the edge away from the heat, is perfect. Look at the color on the goat loin. It's perfectly cooked, perfectly rested. I am really excited to try this. I gotta tell you, the flavor is out of control. It's so multi-layered. There's so many flavor components to it. It's sweet, there's acidity, wonderful development of spices and heat. The flavors are absolutely magnificent. And that is Andre's gift, that perfect cooked roast loin, the wonderful savory flavors of the curry, the kick of heat from the kimchi and the mango. A bit of Caribbean, a bit of Korean mixed together. This dish is fusion at the highest level and not bad from a guy from Scarborough. <laughs>